Lesson 57, The Unfruitful Fig Tree. In today's lesson, we're going to look at the unfruitful fig tree, which pictures the nation of Israel, who continually rejected God's message and messengers, and thus proved themselves to be unfruitful. We can see the sad condition of Israel in the story of the healing of a woman on the Sabbath and the synagogue ruler being upset about this good work. We also hear Jesus speak to those who call him Lord, Lord, but who are not known to Jesus because of their wickedness. When Jesus refers to some people who were killed by a falling tower and others killed by Herod, he explains that their untimely death was not because they were greater sinners than any other. Death is not a respecter of persons and will take the young as well as the old. We all must face death sooner or later. We hope and expect to meet death much later, but we cannot tell whether the Lord will make today our last day in this world. That is why we must repent while we have opportunity, or we shall all perish. When Jesus speaks a parable about the unfruitful fig tree, he is teaching the patience that God has had with the nation of Israel. How often the Lord had sent prophets to Israel to call her back to God, and yet how often they departed in rebellion. Eventually the fig tree would be uprooted and God's blessing given to another. For Israel did not deserve all the grace and goodness of God when she constantly rebelled against God. That is why God has set aside the nation of Israel while he calls all the nations to repentance and faith in Christ. Jesus heals a woman in the synagogue on the Sabbath, which brings about the complaint of the synagogue ruler, who thought that healing should not be done on the Sabbath day. For eighteen long years this poor woman suffered, and the religious ruler was more concerned about what day of the week she should be healed on than about the woman's condition. This man portrays the proud religious Jewish people who lived at the time Jesus came to them. They should have rejoiced to see their Messiah, but instead were complaining about him, though he was doing so many good works. For so many generations they had a dead religion, caring more about strict observances than about pleasing the Lord with a heart of compassion, justice, and mercy. When religion cares more about its own regulations than about the people it is supposed to serve, it has departed from the whole point of religion, and that is to make us godly. This means we will be like God, full of compassion, and not cruel and unkind to those we should love. When Jesus shares two short parables about a mustard seed and about heaven, he does not explain their meaning but both show something very small that grew and spread. It could be he was referring to the pride of religion that spreads in the heart and takes over completely so that the person cannot respond to God's truth and righteousness. Jesus said that we should strive to enter the narrow gate that leads to life. He said this because the broad road is very wide and most people follow that path which leads to destruction. You have to try hard to enter God's kingdom. Not that we enter by our own efforts, but it is so easy to be deceived by false religion and follow the broad way. We need to make sure we are on the right path, for many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not eat and drink with you, and did you not teach in our streets? Association with religion and general knowledge about Jesus will not bring you into God's kingdom. We need to have a personal relationship with Jesus through faith. That is why Jesus will say to the professing religious people, Depart from me, I never knew you. Notice our entrance is based on a personal relationship. In the kingdom, many from other nations will sit down with the prophets, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the nation of Israel will be thrust out because they refuse to accept and receive their king. This does not mean that all of Israel will be cast out, but many of them that could have been saved will find themselves outside the door, shouting, Let us in, 
when other Gentiles have been welcomed to dine with the Lord in heaven. Jesus points out that those who are cast out from God's kingdom will be sent to a place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This tells us that the suffering in hell will involve much grief and much anger. Grief will be due to hopelessness and lack of escape, and anger at their foolishness in not repenting when they had the chance. Perhaps they are also angry with God, but this anger will not be justified, for God has been more than fair to give everyone a chance to be forgiven and enter into heaven. When Jesus is warned that Herod is seeking to kill him, he sends a message back to Herod to say that he would be dying in Jerusalem as all prophets are killed in that city. Then Jesus mourns over Jerusalem as the city which was called to repentance so many times. They refuse to come to the Lord and take shelter in his love and protection. Israel could have been saved and should have borne much fruit for the Lord. He had nurtured Israel with the word and sent prophets time and again, just like the farmer in the parable who spent more time nurturing the fig tree hoping that it would at last produce some fruit. Israel had failed to produce repentance and to receive her Messiah, and so Jerusalem would be left desolate. Let us all be warned to repent while we still have a chance or we will all likewise perish in our rebellion against God. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Luke chapter 13 verse 5